Hello, I'm Mr. B Bates One, and welcome back to another how to video. In today's video, we are going to be looking at making our very own pack for Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Now, before we start, there is a small element of knowledge required in order to make your own packs for Minecraft. You will need to have a basic understanding of your device and how to access your Minecraft world files, just so you'll be able to follow along with this tutorial and understand what's going on. Now, the tutorial itself is based on Windows 10 Edition, but in theory, in terms of folder replacement and things like that, this should work on any device. You're probably thinking then, so what different packs can you actually make for Minecraft? Well, there's resource packs to change how things look. There's behavior packs to change how things run. And then there's skin packs to make the player feel more immersive. Hello. In today's episode, we are going to be looking at skin packs. So without further ado then, let's get into today's episode. So before we start then getting into looking at how we need to create our own skin pack, we do need to enable an option in Minecraft. Because by default for Bedrock Edition, there is a toggle in Minecraft that only allows skins from places like the Marketplace and things like that. So obviously if you want to make your own skin packs, you do need to toggle this off in order to get this to work. So, how do you toggle this off? Let's just exit our game for a moment. Here we go, settings, go to video, uh, profile, and then there is an option here that says allow trusted skins. Now, by default, this is turned on like this, but by toggling it off, that does allow you to create your very own skin. So now that we're on the desktop then, let's get to where we need to be. So I've got a little folder here. We're going to become covering some of these a bit later on as well in the series. But for now, we're going to be looking at the skin pack folder. So this here is the default template that I've put together for skin packs. So I've put this together for you. There is a link for this in the description below. So you can download that. You can use this as your template. You just simply replace the images and update the information in the JSON files that are listed here. So we'll just have a quick look at the actual structure itself. So as you can see, the main skins and the two JSON files that are required for Minecraft all sit in the root folder. And then there is a subfolder called text. And in, in here, there is a text folder as well. Well, it's a .lang folder. It's classified in here. But it's basically just a, a notepad or a basic text file document to which you need to put some information in, which we'll cover in just a moment. So we're looking at the actual skins themselves there. If we just open these up, they're just the default Minecraft skins. Let's just zoom this in. Well, it doesn't look so good zoomed, but these are just just the default skins that come with Minecraft. Same again for Alex. What we want to do then to replace our own skin is that we want to remove out these default ones and we want to put our own one in. So in the example then that I created before, as you saw, it was this guy, Lady 5 skin. Now, I like this guy, Lady 5. He's a great content creator and he makes me laugh. So I have gone online and looked for an Iskal Lady 5 skin to download. I've just saved it. The, uh, a link to it here so kudos to this content creator it looks very very accurate i do believe well all these ads let's just get rid of all this for a second and as you can see here it's a pretty good accurate of this scale skin so we can just download it on the side which is what i have done before you can download whatever skin you like doesn't matter what it is and you just paste it into the root of your main skin packs folder so before adding your own pack you will need to remove these old ones here they're just here as an example so you can see what they are but you just want to remove these files from it so that just your skin exists within that file. And then we want to actually edit the JSON file that comes with it. So in this case, this is the skins.json file. This is what defines everything about your pack in terms of what the skin is. We just open that up. Like I said, this can open up in any editor. It doesn't matter what it is. In this instance, I've got a default free app from Windows 10 Market called Code Writer. It's pretty decent. Labels it out really nicely. And I quite like it. But you can use any editor. Any text editor will do fine. Now, the actual thing you're seeing here is what's called a JSON format. This is how it looks and this is how it communicates information to Minecraft. So you don't necessarily need to understand what JSON does per se. You just need to understand what you need to update to make it work. So in this instance then we are only using an Iskal 85 skin. Now you can have as many as you want in there. You can have 10, 20, 100. doesn't really matter how many you want. The more skins you add, the more you have to add into this file here. In this instance you can see the original Steve, Alex and Dummy were entered in here. Now, I only want the one, which is this guy, so I'm just going to delete this for the moment and resort it to just a single skin, because that's all we've got. And then you just need to update these values here. So in this instance, this is the name of my skin, and this is going to be what we call the internal name. This is what it's going to be referenced as. So I can simply just do this for this instance. Now, like I said, the more you have, the more you add on. So what you would do is you put a comma on the end of that, just simply copy this, paste it underneath, 
format, it doesn't necessarily matter. I'm a bit OCD with it, so I always like to put it in back into place so that it looks correct. And then you would simply just do your next one, and then your next one, and the next one, next one. You just keep doing that down. So once we've done that then, and we've put in all the ones that we want here, and we've got them all defined ready, it's time to move on to the next bit and update that. The next bit then is the manifest file, which again is just another JSON file. If we just open that, we'll close those ones down. So in this instance then, this is the actual how you define what the pack is to Minecraft when you first import it in. So in this instance, and I've called it Mr. B-Bates 1's tutorial skin pack. And as you can see down here in the module section, we have defined this as skin pack. Obviously, give yourself a name. This is how it's going to be referenced. The next things you need to update then is actually these UUID values. These particular UUIDs are quite important. They create uniqueness to your pack, and it's what is then used to define what that pack is through any version of uh, Minecraft Bedrock that you play, whether it be on a, 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 a mobile, tablet, or a PC. Now, just by changing a sil single value like that on the end will not make that work. It will throw lots of errors in Minecraft. That's not how you need to do that. In this instance, because I'm on a desktop, I do have an app down here called a GUID generator. It's free within the Windows Store. You just simply download it. It will generate a GUID for you, and you can copy and paste it into your packs in Minecraft. If you're on a mobile device, then you can just launch, um, let's just go up here, what have we got? We can go to online UUID generator.net and it'll also generate it for you as well. So if you don't have the, obviously, the advantage of using the app, then you can use this as well. So you need to do this twice. So in this instance, I'm just moving this off the screen. In this instance, we'll copy this, let's say for example, we'll overwrite it with this one your pack now has a unique ID. And then we do the same again, so we just refresh the page to generate a new one. We'll use it down here as well. Both of these need to be unique, both of these need to be changed. Once you've done these two, save it. And then we can move on to the final section. So the final section then is the text folder. In here, there is a file called en underscore us dot lang. And this is simply just a, a text file, as I mentioned before, and this will hold information about the pack Let's just open this up and here we go so at the moment then this is basically the visual element this is how it will look when you view it in minecraft if you don't provide these values you'll just get like default values that are sitting there they don't necessarily look great they don't look like a professional sort of thing has been done for it so this is why you provide this on the end of it just to give it a bit more information and to give it a visually better visually better view so in this case then when you're actually defining the the information you do have to specify exactly which elements so in this case it's always skin dot because we're always referencing skin or if we're referencing the skin pack as a whole then it's skin pack dot but in this instance then because we've added the scl 5 in there and we've removed these three we don't need these three anymore so let's just delete those two and then we'll update this one so example is the name of the pack now in the original skins json you notice down here it says sterilized name and localized name. Now I've left this as just example. I just glossed it over that before because it didn't make any much relevance at that point. It's more of a relevance now. Whatever is in here is what will be defined in Minecraft in the background. So if you ever need to reference anything to do with the skin pack, this is how you would reference this. So in this case, it's skin.example because it's the name that we've put in the sterilized name value. Now I don't know what the significance is of these two being different. I've never actually tried that, but I've always just put the same value in both fields. So when it comes to actually referencing the information, it needs to match, case and all. So if you've got a capital E, you need to put a capital E, so on and so forth. So as you can see now, then the localized name up here is iscal85, which is then the name that appears here. So in this instance, then, we would do iscal85. Now this here is then, after the equals, is what's actually displayed on the screen. So in this case, we do iscal85 made by whoever this was in the original one. I don't know who this was. Let's just quickly have a quick look. Does it give a name? Bulbasaur. Was that what we saw there before all the adverts? Yes, Bulbasaur. So thank you, Bulbasaur, for this Call 85 skin. We're going to stick that right there. And then we'll save that. Do this line here for each and every line that you have a different skin in for. So if you've got 20 skins, you're going to have to have 20 lines just like this. Each one referencing the localized name up here, so that needs to be unique for each one that you create. And then this is how you would then reference it overall. And then just to give the actual pack itself a title off, that's the example title. That's what 
displays again on the front of the uh, the actual pack information and then we've got the buy which is obviously i made the pack so you don't see that on screen i've noticed uh but it doesn't seem to complain about it being there so i'm unsure so i put it in anyway so even if anybody else does get hold of the pack and they open it they can still see that it was me that created it so once all of that is saved then how do you get that into minecraft well there's a couple of ways of doing it with it being on a desktop we can simply zip the file up if we create copy the skin pack here and paste it here and we'll just rename this to iscal 85 new because we've made a new one addition to it we'll add it to the archive zip it up click ok so now it's created a new zip for it so now that we've got it as a zip file if we just simply rename it to .mc pack it will turn into a minecraft fact so .mc pack it'll come up with a warning but you just click it and as you can see it does then turn into one so at this point what you need to do is simply just double click it to launch it so now if we launch it in minecraft just by double clicking on it and loading the file up as you can see it says import started successfully imported mr b Bates one tutorial skin pack that is it your skin pack's ready to use so now if you go to your profile we go to a new character and we click create now in order to view the packs that you've created you then go onto the second tab here and then under owned you will see Mr. B Blake's One's tutorial skin pack. Now, if you click on it, as you can see, there's our Risco 85 skin. And as you can see, as we did just a moment ago when we edited the text file, Risco 85 by Bulbasaur 8. And there we are. That is how we make our very own skin pack in Minecraft. Thank you very much for watching the video, guys. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. And I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.